Hello guys, I'm Shingen Blaze, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel! <laughs> I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. So today's video is a CPU comparison in between the Ryzen 5 2600X, so Zen Plus cores, second generation Ryzen, versus the Ryzen 5 3600 Zen 2 cores, the third generation Ryzen versus Ryzen 5 4650G, which is an APU that uses Zen 2 cores, so cores from the third generation Ryzen CPUs, uh, while having less cache and a bit of a different die per se, and there is a, and there is a third generation APU, so you have the Ryzen 2000G APUs, Ryzen 3000G APUs, one has Zen cores, other has Zen Plus cores, and now you have the Ryzen 4000G um, APUs that actually have the Zen 2 cores as the Ryzen 3000 series CPUs. It's a bit messy, but it is what it is. And I'm doing this video because I already tested this APU with 25 games in several resolutions, but I actually wanted to know how this APU would fare in terms of CPU power only, okay? So using a discrete GPU. And I wanted to know, uh, since it is the 4000 generation, but uses Zen cores, Zen 2 cores as the 3000 series CPUs, I decided to test it again it's against the 2600X and the 3600 to see uh, where it actually fits in terms of CPU performance. If it is more like the 2600X due to having less cache or maybe more like the 3600. Who knows? Let's see the results right after the sponsor of today's video. For today's sponsor, we have GVG Mall where you can acquire your Windows 10 Home serial key for only $16. And using my SKEG discount code will get you 20% off, making it only $11. After the payment, you'll receive the key in your account, and after getting it, you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings, and BAM! You have an activated system. And yeah, guys, it is what it is. Let's go! Today's first game is the usual AC Valhalla using the X12 and the high settings. In here, we can easily see several things, like the fact that even at 120 FPS, AC Valhalla is mostly GPU bound, and that in this case scenario, the CPUs just change the 1% lows slightly. Although there is a difference when using SAM in both the Ryzen 5 3600 and the Ryzen 5 4650G. At 1080p, the 4650G will still get a boost from using SAM, a difference that may be presented due to the lower amount of L3 cache on the 4650G. At 1440p and 4K, we run into a GPU bottleneck and all CPUs will achieve the same FPS numbers due to that, with even the Ryzen 5 2600X being more than able to play this game at around 100 average FPS. <laughs> 
Now with the mighty CSGO, there has developers that thought that making the game free was actually a good idea against cheaters. Ryzen 3000 CPUs brought a really nice improvement over the older 2000 series in games like CSGO, mostly due to the Zen 2 architecture, and since the 4650G uses Zen 2 cores with a slightly changed die, I wanted to know how it would perform in terms of CPU power only. And to my surprise, at 1080p it actually performed the same as the stock Ryzen 5 2600X, even having superior Zen 2 cores with higher IPC and the 2600X will get even better once overclocked, which is really disappointing for the 4650G. At 1440p and 4K, the differences are still there since CSGO with these settings won't be bottlenecked by my RX 6800, not even running at 4K and 400 average FPS. Far Cry New Dawn is another CPU dependent title, not CPU heavy, but certainly CPU dependent. Something that will most likely be relieved with Far Cry 6 improved engine and the use of DirectX 12 or Vulkan API. As for the results, we can see that all CPUs are bottlenecking hard, even at 1440p, which is insane. Even the Ryzen 5 3600 is enabled to achieve more than 100 average FPS with this RAM configuration, and the 2600X, once overclocked, is once again faster than the Ryzen 5 4650G, even having older and slower cores. At 4K, we finally start seeing some GPU bottleneck, but even there, we can see that both the 2600X and the 4650G are still bottlenecking the GPU a bit in some scenarios. This time with Horizon Zero Dawn using the X12 and high settings. This game is mostly GPU bound, but it can be really dependent in terms of CPU multi-threading ability, basically core count. In here, all the CPUs have the same 6 cores 12 threads set, and at 1080p we can finally see the 4650G performing slightly better than the overclocked 2600X, which is interesting. At 1440p and 4K, the results are more or less equal and within the margin of error since we run into a GPU bottleneck even at over 100 FPS. Now with Ghost Recon Breakpoint using Vulkan API and high settings. Vulkan was a blessing for this game and has helped a lot in terms of the CPU bottlenecking caused by the old DX11. At 1080p we have once again the overclocked 2600X being slightly faster than the 4650G and the 3600 being once again considerably faster than both. The results at 1080p and 1440p are practically the same since we run into a CPU bottleneck most of the time, during the benchmark of course, meaning that a stronger CPU could get even more FPS in these situations. At 4K we finally get into a GPU bottleneck, but we're still running at over 120 average FPS, and interestingly, at 1080p and 1440p, using SAM with the 4650G brought us no improvement, but at 4K, since we have a more GPU dependent scenario, we have a little boost.
last game with side-by-side -side comparisons is the vastly played Rainbow Six Siege, using high settings and Vulkan API. This is really well optimized and with Vulkan it runs even better. At 1080p even the old 2600X can do around 341 average FPS and while the 4650G is once again below that, we still have around 330 average FPS, which is great for an APU. At 1440p the lead that the 3600 had starts to get smaller due to the more present GPU bottleneck, but even that way the 3600 remains the best performer. And at 4K the results get even, with only Sam giving a bit more performance, and with Ryzen 5 2600 strangely getting the same values as with Sam and other CPUs. Strange. Now with Need for Speed Heat, a game that urgently needs support for DirectX 12 or Vulkan, since the DX11 in this game engine is severely bottlenecking the CPU performance. Still, it is good for testing. <laughs> At 1080p we have once again the 4650G matching the stock 2600X, while overclocking that same 2600X makes it around 7 average FPS faster than the 4650G. As for the 3600, it still maintains dominance with 5 average FPS more than the overclocked 2600G and 12 more than the 4650G but most importantly with a good improvement of around 10 FPS in the 1% lows. At 1440p we're still CPU bottlenecked, hence the results being the same, and even at 4K, the 2600X and the 4650G will still bottleneck most of the times, making Need for Speed Heat one of the hardest arcade racing games to run while having lots of AI cars. The last game tested is Civilization VI using the X12 and high settings in the graphics benchmark. This is literally the first game where the 4650G actually surpasses the overclocked 2600X by a good margin, and that happens due to 4650's superior multi-threading, having around 10 FPS more in the averages and 1% lows, which is not astonishing, but it's something. 1440p results are around the same since we are still into a CPU bottleneck, and at 4K, the same scenario happens for the 2600X and the 4650G, being the 3600 the only CPU that takes the GPU close to its limits, even at 4K. The last benchmark is with Cinebench R15 and R20. Like I said in the previous benchmark, the Ryzen 5 4650G has better multi-threading abilities than the Ryzen 5 2600X due to having Zen 2 architecture instead of Zen Plus, and that is seen here in the results. It does not only have higher multi-threading abilities, but also higher single-threaded ones, even at the same frequency being slightly superior in Cinebench R15 and quite superior in R20. Overclocking the 4650G increases the multi-threading points, but actually decreases the single thread once, unlike in the other two CPUs. All said and done, let's go to the conclusion. Conclusion guys, so after you saw the results, uh, I think you did see the results, we can see that the 2600X is in general faster than the 4650G in terms of CPU performance only and the 3600 is still the way to go in terms of performance. As for, for example, in terms of prices, the 2600 is quite cheaper than the 4650G because it has no integrated graphics and it is using an older arch architecture, also consuming more power. For example, in terms of CPU power only, the 4650G from my own testing consumes around like 50 watts, yes, 
40, 45 to 55 watts under load, while the, um, the 2600X can easily go up to 120 watts on full load. So there is a difference. So you get a newer chip with almost the same performance and way less power draw. And it, it has an integrated graphics. So it is a trade. As for the 3600, well, if you can find one chip for let's say like 160, 170 dollars at max, it is a good upgrade if you want to go, for example, from a 1600 or a 1600X uh, to a 3600 or maybe a Ryzen 7 1700X. Basically, if you have a Ryzen 1000 generation, so the Ryzen first, gener first generation CPUs going for let's say the 4650G or going for the 3600 is also a good option. If you are low on budget, go to the 2600X because in most games, uh, besides consuming more power, it is still faster than the, 20, than the 4650G, okay? Also, sorry for the long conclusion, but I just want to say one more thing. So, the 4650G APU has actually one interesting thing. Instead of having one memory controller, it actually has two memory controllers. So you can actually run RAM like 4400 MHz at 4400 MHz with the Infinity Fabric at 1-1 one, one ratio. So at 4400 MHz RAM, you will get 2200 MHz FCLK ratio, okay? That will bring the performance way higher. While for example, the, um, the 3600 will mostly block at 3800 MHz RAM, with uh, 1900 MHz FCLK and the 2600X will mostly be blocked at like 3600 MHz RAM if the kit, if the kit is good uh, and 1800 MHz FCLK so the higher the RAM speed and the higher the FCLK the better it will perform in CPU bound scenarios okay so the 4650G uh, performs a bit worse overall but can also get way higher RAM frequencies but well, it is a trade because in the other CPUs you can actually use lower frequencies but also decrease the timing, so it is a trade. But overall, I just wanted you to know this particular fact. That's all for today's video, thanks a lot for watching. Um, I mean, and see you in the next one, maybe, and I think really maybe, like almost certainly, it will be uh, a video about how to install Windows 10 slash Windows 11. And after that, how to optimize Windows 10 slash Windows 11. Thanks a lot one more time and see you in the next video.